And there they go. Welcome back to RacingNews.com. I'm Magic in the field of six three-year-old fillies. We'll be traveling a mile on the 16th to Oakland Park in Saturday's Martha Washington Stakes with me to preview. Welcome back to Dr. Miranda, her first return uh, to the Racing News YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you back. Welcome. How have you been? I'm doing good. It's crazy to think that tomorrow I have a one-month-old. Life has just been flying by. Like People tell you life goes by a lot faster once you have kids, and I never realized it till now. But no, I'm excited to be back, back to normal. It's a huge weekend. We have Pegasus Cup this weekend also. I know you guys are working hard on the guide. And then we have big Super Bowl stuff going on. Go Bengals. I hate the Kansas City Chiefs. So I hope Jared watches this. He probably won't, but we'll see. Well, if he does, guaranteed this was the, it was nice having you, Dr. Martin. I know, right? I wish you well in the future. <laughs> well, forget the football. We're focused on Oakland Park and this Kentucky Oaks prep race, the Martha Washington Stakes. Ten points to the winner. And like I said, a field of six in here. If you've been watching the series that we've done at RacingDudes.com and on the YouTube channel covering Oakland specifically, you recognize a couple of horses here, including uh, Secret Oath, who is the two to one second choice. Optionality, the four horse, the nine to five favorite. But Dr. Miranda, take us through the field and let me know who you're picking to win. Yep. So we're back in action on the Oaks Trail, and this race kind of starts back, back to back weekends up until we get to the Kentucky Oaks, which is awesome. There's not a whole lot of horses in here, but there is about three pretty good horses. So they haven't faced each other yet. So we'll see what will happen. With the number one, we ha you have Hypersport with trainer Mason Ingrid and Jackie Pereira. Um, she broke her maiden two starts back. You probably hear my baby with hiccups right now. It's totally fine. Uh, she broke her maiden two starts back at Oakland, running an impressive 84 buyer on her second race. She won by four lengths the next time out. However, she got bumped up to the allowance rankings and did not do as well. She got fourth place, but she finished 12 lengths back to the winner, Secret Oath, who's also in this race. She has a lot of early speed, um, so I expect her to lead the pack up until the straightaway. She's going to be pressing the pace a lot. She's not raced this far before, and the fact that she faded at a mile last time out gives me little hope she'll do any better in this race. Um, the number two is Princess Pauline. That's the number two horse with Steve Asmussen and Arietta. I think this is Steve's second horse in this race because his other one just seems to be a little bit better. This horse has yet to break her maiden. They keep dropping her down in maidens. The last one was an 84,000, and she got seventh place. She also faced one of the favorite secret oath again and only finished 10 lengths behind her. So I don't see this horse having any kind of impact whatsoever. I just don't really understand why Steve would put her in a stakes race when she can even win a maiden race at this point. Then we go to the number three horse, Como Square, who is a close favorite at five to two with Brad Cox and John Johnny B. She is two for two so far with a winning a maiden special weight and then optional claimer. Looking at the buyer speed figures and the times of those races, um, I really don't feel like the horse did that amazing. I think she just really wasn't up against a whole lot. So maybe she does have a lot more to show with a little bit tougher competition, or maybe she's just not that good. Another thing is that Brad had her at Indiana Downs instead of Churchill in um, – or Indiana Grand instead of Churchill in November because Churchill was still running. So that kind of tells me that this isn't his best three-year-old in the pack. And I'm not just hating on this horse because it is Brad Cox, but it's because I really don't think she is that great. I'm going to pick up my baby real quick. Well, I think Harper Harper's already joining you on the Brad Cox hate is what I'm hearing right now. Yeah, she does not like Brad Cox whatsoever. No Brad Cox love in the whole household there. <laughs> Uh, then we're going to go to the number four horse. That is optionality. That's a nine to five favorite. This horse is looking for her fourth win in a row. It did take her four times to break her maiden. But once she stretched her out, just even just a half of a furlong, she's been kind of unstoppable. Each race she has won by multiple links and had an 85 buyer uh, last time out. She has proven that she can run at the stakes level because her last two worst stakes races. But a couple things. She was also at Indiana Grand that went, then went to Remington Park. She also has not ran at this distance before. And that always throws a big red flag to me in these younger fillies because you don't really know how versatile they really are at this point. Now, on paper, she looks to be one of the best here, but I'm just not sure if that's really that accurate. And then we're going to go to the number five horse. That's Cupid's Music with Trainer Durham, who I'm not really too familiar with. But looking at his 2021 stats, only ran 46 times and had three winners. So that's not the best of odds. This horse did win one time. Um, um, ran a 54 buyer, though, not to mention last time out, this horse was beat by Secret Oath by 30 lengths. The notes say never involved with that, so I don't think this horse will be really involved in this race at all. Then lastly, we're going to go to Secret Oath, who is two for one for D. Wayne Lucas and Luis Contreras. 
Now, this horse knows how to win, but also knows kind of how to lose. She won impressively last time out at Oakland Park by eight lengths in the allowance race with the field's best buyer of 93. But the race before that, I saw in person at Churchill Downs. I was there that closing weekend, and she did not do her best. I don't know if it was the added distance or the fact that it was a G2 and the competition was just a little bit better. Now, this horse has been training great up until this point, ran a 46-second four, 46 four for a long couple weeks ago. But I'm just not sure if this horse is the best um, or just not really had very good competition the last time out. So with all that said, I really don't like any of these horses, but my top pick is going to be Secret Oath. The main reason I'm going to go with her is because I don't think any of the other horses are that great. On paper, they seem distant, but I think they are all okay at best. I just don't really think that your Oaks winner is in here. Um, so we're going to have to try to find some value now because she's going to be more than likely a favorite. And you also never know. Maybe she can slide up to 4-1, to one, float up to 4-1 to one with Cox and Asmussen in here. That would be great. So what we're going to do is underneath, we're going to go crazy, and we're going to do an exacta and trifecta box of 6-5-4. Four, four. We're going to add in that Cupid's horse and hope that Cupid's music can come through and beat the favorite optionality. But who knows what this race <laughs> well, listen, Oklahoma Park, all sorts of crazy things are happening. Uh, D. Wayne Lucas is one of the best in the business, and when he's got a horse running as well as Secret Oath, hey, I'm with you. Let's put her on top. See if she can go back to back here. Head over to racenews.com. We have free picks for every race, every track around the country. We have full coverage of the Kentucky Oaks, Kentucky Derby, and Pegasus World Cup over at racenews.com and our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash racing dudes. Leave us a comment below. Who do you think is going to win this race? Is it going to be the coach? Is it Brad Cox, Asmussen, or someone else? Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Tell all your friends. We'll see you at the track. Aaron, one thing that I really love about the Pegasus World Cup card is because it gives us the inside track to the Pegasus World Cup wagering guide that we do every year at RacingDudes.com. And this is one of the biggest ones that we do. If the fans are watching this, you're not familiar with it. Aaron, talk about what's different about the Pegasus World Cup guide, specifically that live bankroll article you do with Jared. Yeah, so if, you, if you're new to the guides completely, we have race-by-race race breakdown uh, and suggested wagers for all the stakes races. And then we have other write-ups for all the non-graded stakes races. We'll give you a pick four and pick five plays. We'll also, for the bigger ones, we'll give you, uh, you know, what each member of the Racing Dude team, their top three or four horses for all the stakes races. But what you're referring to and really makes races, or uh, yeah, big day races like the Pegasus, uh, all the Triple Crown races, the Travers and the Breeders' Cup is the live bankroll article. And basically what that is, it's Jared and I's specific plays, not only the, the exact plays we're going to be doing, but the amounts we're going to be doing. Uh, you know, we set a budget of usually three to four hundred dollars for all the stakes races. And we'll just give you race by race. This is exactly what we're doing. Uh, it's something we started at the 2020 Breeders' Cup. We had a lot of success. It was highly popular. People really liked it. And uh, we've done really, really well with them throughout uh, 2021 and, and rounded off with a nice Breeders' Cup. So, yeah, the, the Pegasus uh, bankroll article last year did really well, made nearly $150 profit if you played it for 49% uh, uh, ROI. So uh, a lot of positives uh, going into this year's uh, Pegasus with, with the bankroll article. One thing that's nice about it, too, is that if your budget might not be as high as what the racing dudes are suggesting, you guys aren't playing really anything for the minimums. You're pressing your opinions, which is something we preach all the time at RacingDudes.com. So if you're looking to play maybe for $100, well, you just bring the denominations down a little bit on every play. So everything for every kind of a player is available in the Racing Dudes Wagering Guides, specifically this one. Head over to RacingDudes.com, click on the Handicapping Products page. The pre-sale will be happening until the draw, and then it's just a matter of time until once this guy right here gets to working, once the draw comes out. It's usually about 24 to 48 hours after the draw, the guide is officially available. But if you go to RacingDudes.com, the pre-sale is going on right now. Make sure you get this. You don't want to miss it.